This is an interview with John Henry Lee, the Vernon Hill Civil Rights Institute's Oral History Project. I'm Dr. Horace Huntley. We're presently at the Vernon Hill Civil Rights Institute. Today is July 19, 1996. This is an interview with John Henry Lee for the Birmingham Civil Rights Institute's Oral History Project. I'm Dr. Horace Huntley. We're presently at the Birmingham Civil Rights Institute. Today is July 19, 1996. Thank you, Mr. Lee, for taking time out of your schedules. Come all the way from Chicago to talk with us today about the movement and your activities mm -hmm. in Birmingham in, in the 50s and 60s. Um, tell me, were your parents from Birmingham? Were they originally from Birmingham? Uh, no, no. Um, I believe my father died when I was uh, five years old. Mm -hmm. So uh, I don't know a whole lot about him, except he was a uh, a miner, coal miner, coal miner, okay. and I think he was from Marion, Alabama, or somewhere around Marion, Alabama. Right. And uh, he um, came. You know, we lived in Best. I was born in Best. Okay. Alabama. All right. And um, you know, he was uh, a coal miner there. Were your mother from Birmingham, or was she no, from Marion? No, no, no. My mother was from Bolagie, Alabama. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. And, and yeah. Mm -hmm. County and she uh, came, uh, you know, when she was young, young adult, that she mm -hmm. came to uh, Bessemer right. to, to try to find some work. And uh, she met my father and, and uh, they you know, got right. married, and, and yeah. I was the uh, product of that union. Oh, all right. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But uh, you, you have any really brothers and sisters? No, I don't. Okay. No, I, uh, now, what about the educational level of both your mother and father? Do you know how, how much education they had? Uh, my mother um, got no further than um, eighth grade. I don't, mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. I mean, she might have gone to school eight years. I don't know right. if it was the real eighth grade, but yeah. Uh, yeah. that's as far as she got. Okay. Uh, she, uh, but, uh, she, could, uh, she can read and write. And right. Write her, yeah. you know, but uh, she, formally, she didn't uh, get any further than eighth grade. Right. Uh, my father was, uh, I doubt, I mean, I don't know yeah. how far he got. Actually, right. Because okay. he was, you know, I was so yeah. young when he died. Yeah. Did your mother work? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I saw her. She was uh, uh, working uh, uh, as a waitress uh, mm -hmm. in a family run business, uh, oh. uh, restaurant and uh, right. uh, business. Yeah. Now, you started first, when did you start first grade? Um, Lewis Elementary School in uh, Sipco. Okay, um, so you moved, you, you moved from Bethlehem to uh, Sipco? Uh, uh, yeah. Are you still living? Yeah, um, I'm, well actually after my father died mm -hmm. um, and my family started a business here in uh, Birmingham, right. uh, my mother moved up to you know participate in that and right. we came and lived uh, in Birmingham. Okay. Uh, and I started school, uh, middle school there, okay. because the business was in a city. Yeah, so, okay. And uh, we lived in a city. Right. So, okay. um, what, a, what do you remember about Lewis School? Uh, <laughs> uh, a long time ago. Yeah, it's a long time ago. But I, I remember it was, um, well, the first grade, it, the week went, we went half days. I remember that. Um, and uh, you need that one to walk in the morning or in the evening. It's a lot of kids. Um, right. And uh, we, uh, I guess it was typical, uh, it's just that it was a lot of kids. That, yeah. Uh, that, yeah. That's what I remember most about it. It was uh, just a the lot number, of kids. The number yeah. of kids. That you yeah. yeah. And, and you know, I just seemed to, it, it wasn't uh, progressing academically, I guess, as well as my mother thought I should have been. Because uh, I had gone to uh, kindergarten and I knew some things before I went <laughs> to Lewis, and uh, and I wouldn't, didn't learn anything new until like the second grade. I mean, uh, just 
So I spent some time. You learned enough to put you in already yeah. learned. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, so how long were you at Lewis? I was there until uh, through the third grade. Third grade. Okay. And then you left there and went to what school? I went to Alameda Fatima. Catholic school. All right. On, right. Where was that located? South side? It was on the south side. It was uh, 14th Street and uh, 6th Avenue. Hmm. Uh, okay. and, you know, it's been oh. since turned, torn down. Right. So, uh, the move, I mean, <laughs> the building I went to is not, <coughs> is not the building that they there. Yeah. 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 That's, that's basically the UAB area right now. Right. Right. They brought right. all of that area in there. In fact, yeah. on the corner 14th Street is the, uh, the health department, Birmingham, uh, Alabama. Um, what was the transition like from public school? Or do you remember that as a child? Transition from public school to Catholic school. Um, uh, yeah, I mean it was it was uh, very different. Mm -hmm. You know, we uh, it was more structured. Mm -hmm. um, we had uh, you know you spent. All of the, a lot of time in the classroom. We, you know, we had certain things we had to do. We had, uh, went to mass every day, <laughs> uh, uh, and but um, and uh, we just had to, uh, we spent the time in class. Um, you know, learning. Uh, you had certain things that you had to do, yeah. and I think that helped. You know, just being in the classroom and you know having to um, to do whatever it is that you were supposed to do at that level. Right. So I think sort of reinforced the learning. And do you remember any of the teachers from those early days, either at Lewis or Alia Fatima? Um, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, that, that, yeah, does anybody stick out in your mind? That's what I'm asking. Okay. Did anybody have any real mm -hmm. impression, make an impression on, on you at the time? Um, uh, well, I remember at Lewis, there was um, Mrs. Gordon uh, was uh, uh, very uh, influential to me. I always remembered her. And she always, whenever I met her later on, she remembered me as a student. Uh, and I remembered her, you know. Um, uh, so you must have made your impression on her as well. Uh, yeah, I think so. And uh, she lived in the community. Uh, the, you know, uh, that we lived in, and I did see her periodically. Yeah. Um, and, you know, she was a dedicated teacher. She, uh, did you still live in a slip call? Yeah. And you went to uh, tell their family? Right. right. What was the community like? How would you describe the slip call? What were the, the people, oh, what kind of occupations did people have there? Oh, okay. It was um, uh, steel workers um, and housewives. Um, most of the people worked uh, for Sipco or the, the packing house that was there. Mm -hmm. uh, so it was a working class community. Yeah, working class community. Uh, a lot of people worked for, I mean, a lot of people worked for Sipco or they worked for U.S. Pipe or Stockholm or something right. like that. Yeah. And, uh, you know, they, they, the adults <laughs> worked mm -hmm. and the kids, uh, you know, typical kids. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, do you remember any relationship between your community and the Birmingham Police Department? Um, you Were there any, ever any, any uh, incidents that you remember with the police department during the time that you lived there? Um, no. Uh, I mean, only when something happened. You know, otherwise I didn't really see them, you know, right. uh, and didn't want to see them because they were, you know, it was, uh, it was a, in some communities, the police are there, I, I remember seeing a sign on the car and live in Minneapolis and we're here to protect and serve. Mm -hmm. Was that the way that the police was looked at here in Birmingham, being in the black community to protect and serve? Uh, no, no, uh, they were looked at uh, to uh, suppress, I think, or uh, come in and clean up after something happened, but uh, protect you—you uh, you didn't look at you know look to them to protect. Mm -hmm. You know they were going to protect you know the other the separate uh, <laughs> white community. Yeah. You know they might come in and you know sort of separate us after we <laughs> mm -hmm. 
did something, but they didn't come in. So, so it was not looked upon as very positive in no, that no. community. They didn't want to see the police. It yeah. wasn't a p- positive uh, thing to see the police coming. Right. You, know, that, you know, something was out of hand, or, mm-hmm. you know, or they were coming in to, to uh, suppress something. Right. Yeah. That's the way I, you know, remember it as a child. Right. You went on to Immaculata High School. Mm-hmm. What do you remember about Immaculata? Immaculata was a school that it was the only black high, uh, Catholic high school that was two. Uh, yeah, the Holy Family, Holy Family and Immaculata. Yeah. Uh, I remember Immaculata as having mm-hmm. been known for athletes for basketball. Too, uh, yes. <laughs> well, they, they, we always did have a good basketball team. Uh, up until around the time I started playing. Uh, you know, the, the last couple of years were not so good, but prior to that, uh, uh, they had real good basketball teams. Oh. And, uh, you know, uh, academically, uh, you know, they were pretty good also. Right. But, uh, yeah, in, in the early 60s, late 50s, uh, they had real good teams. Right. Yeah. Um, and Michael, now you had. Uh, white teachers there, is that correct? Yes. Yeah, we had uh, the nuns were uh, all white and the, the priests were white. Uh, they had some lay teachers that were uh, that were white, uh, that were black. I mean, yeah. <laughs> and uh, you know they were um, you know dedicated people. Uh, I mean, uh, they wanted to make sure that we. Uh, learned and became productive members of society. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of discipline. Well, yeah, a lot of discipline. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, you know, I guess we, <laughs> I needed it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, one, uh, my, my uh, math teacher at, at Immaculata, uh, Mrs. Smith, was you know a black lay teacher. Mm-hmm. And she was a very good math teacher. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, you know, having you know benefited from that helped me when I later got to college uh, of having had a good math teacher. I, I'm sure she would be surprised if I, if I gave her credit for that because I wasn't, uh, uh, you know, I wasn't uh, a good student. Uh, I, well, I mean, I was an okay student, but I wasn't uh, disciplined in her class. That's it. That's so, so. She, she would be surprised <laughs> right. to go on to do it. Yeah. What did you do after high school? Uh, high school, I went to um, Xavier University and I, uh, you know, eventually graduated with a uh, degree, BS degree in pharmacy. Okay. Yeah. And is that what you what you're doing now? You go yeah. pharmacist? Yeah, mm-hmm. registered pharmacist, and uh, I live in uh, Chicago. Mm-hmm. I work for. School girls. Right. During the time of the movement, you were uh, in high school. I was, yeah, I was a freshman in high school uh, during, uh, well, during the 63. 63, 63. During the 63, I was a freshman in high school. Right. Uh, and how did you get involved? Uh, well, I mean, my uh, my family was always was involved, you know, for years in the uh, the movement. Um, they were making their contribution, you know, in whatever way they could. And I grew up with that, you know, and uh, uh, my uncles were arrested for uh, riding the buses and, uh, you know, raiding the buses and uh, mm-hmm. the uh, lunch counters and right. so forth. Like, so that was always happening and uh, we were always involved. I mean, my family <laughs> was involved in the uh, um, uh, meetings, you know, that every week. That the mass meetings. Mass meetings. Did, that you ever, did you attend any of the mass meetings? Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, sometimes. What, was, what were the meetings? How would you describe a mass meeting? Uh, well, it was a, uh, it was like church. Uh, it was very, uh, a lot of emotion. Um, but it was all, you know, we used the, uh, the uh, Bible. Uh, sort of to explain what was happening or uh, use that type of emotion to translate it into the political thing to uh, advance uh, the, the human rights. Uh, and it was very, you know, <laughs> you had that kind of fervor, the uh, religious fervor to, um, 
try to do what you can do to um, to further your right. your uh, yeah. rights. Yeah, you were a freshman in high school, and in other high schools around Oldman, Parker, uh, Carver, other schools around Birmingham, the kids would go to school, and then they would leave school, head into the movement headquarters. Did that happen at a back lot? Uh, no. No, I mean, the, I, the, my experience was that it did not happen. You know, we were in school and uh, we had to stay in school. Uh, they, at, at one day, I remember that the uh, kids came and, and tried to get us to come out to join in the movement. And that day, and as far as I know, nobody left our school, but they did come and, and, and asked us. But I wanted to, you know, I wanted to participate, and I was trying to ask my mother, could I go? And, uh, you know, um, she wasn't too keen on me doing it, but uh, she finally agreed to let me do it. But I, I couldn't, I didn't leave school to do it. I did it from home, you know. We went and uh, on the weekend I uh, got involved and went to the church. To, uh, yeah. How did that happen? What did you, what did you do? Uh, you left home and went directly to the church. What church? Uh, I don't know the name of the church, but it was um, it was like about Third or Fourth Avenue South, and about uh, twenty three, uh, twenty four hundred mm -hmm. North. Uh, okay. Um, and uh, we went to that church, and uh, we had uh, some a few minutes of someone like uh, I don't know who it was, but uh, one of the civil rights leaders. Uh, it wasn't. Uh, I remember people like Andy Young and uh, mm -hmm. Jane Bevels and so forth, but I don't know who it was that uh, gave us our orientation. Right. Um, and they told us, you know, how we were to march and you know what to respond. We had, they anticipate things that the police would do, and when they do this, you do that. You know, so, you know we were instructed to uh, when they uh, we were holding your signs and everything, they're gonna come and try to scare you, and snatch your sign, and try to intimidate you. And, you know, um, so you just let it go, so that they, you know defeat that purpose. And uh, they anticipate that, and uh, you know some other things. Uh, Mm -hmm. about how we were supposed to uh, 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 orderly, you know, right. uh, proceed, proceed in the in the march. Yeah. But, you know, uh, and we, we got those instructions and then we were supposed to go along a certain route. And, uh, so you were marching then from the south side mm -hmm. back toward downtown. downtown. Toward downtown. Mm -hmm. And uh, we left that church and I think we... Uh, um, they didn't anticipate us coming from that direction. Uh, this was a, a new, new tactic, I guess. <laughs> and um, so they, you know, we got a, made it a pretty good distance, I think, because they didn't know where we were coming from. You know, it was, uh, people were coming from different directions, right. so they couldn't. Uh, they usually anticipate people coming from the north side, from 16th Street. Uh -huh. St. John's, that, that area, rather than coming from the south side. Yeah. So you were yeah. somewhat of a sneak attack. Yeah, yes, I think so. And it was, uh, I think we walked down and we got down to First Avenue, we don't I believe, we were coming mm -hmm. down. And uh, at some point they, they discovered that we were coming from this way and then they came and stopped our line and, you know, lined us up in front of some store. And uh, started to arrest my group. Uh, How large a group? Uh, uh, it was Hansburg. I think we had a couple of blocks of the people. Mm -hmm. So it was, a, it was a, pretty, a pretty large group. Right. Okay. And, uh, yeah, and they started to uh, arrest us. And, uh, they had paddy wagons and uh, put. Uh, Four, or at least, I don't know how many people. I know it was too many. <laughs> they had the little four sections in the paddy wagon, and uh, they put too many of us in there. It was really hot. Uh, and tight. And tight, yeah. And I was sweating and trying to breathe, and then they'd take off, and 
stop. And, you know, mm-hmm. and uh, fortunately for me, they um, stopped after a couple of blocks uh, before we got too far and took us out of the paddy wagon and put us on a bus, mm-hmm. which, which, you know, which was great because <laughs> it wasn't as uncomfortable as that paddy wagon. Right. There's so many people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, one of those. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, And then they proceeded. Where did where did they take you? Uh, they took us to the uh, county jail. Uh-huh. County jail. Uh, we went in down underneath, and uh, uh-huh. then they took us off the bus and put us in the uh, elevator. Uh-huh. And they locked. <laughs> all of these <laughs> children. All all of us. Were Children. So I, you know, no, you know, I was one of the older ones, and I, I was coming up on, um, I was 14, I think, and I, was, I would have been in May. I was going to be 15, okay. and um, they um, locked that elevator, which was, you know, sort of intimidating to mm-hmm. me. You know, in here, um, you know, it, <laughs> it's on me at this point, you know, right. and uh, then we went up to the top of the county building. Got all they got us off the elevator and uh, locked it behind us. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so that, that, that sounded sort of permanent. Yeah, yeah that, that was very scary to me. You know, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know but I know where I am. <laughs> they didn't lock it, everything that I go through, somebody locks it. Right. Uh, but, uh, and we, we got up there, and uh, how long were you in the Uh For five days. Five days. Now, there in the, in in the, the county, county jail. In the county Who jail. I think I was arrested on Sunday, and I got out uh, late Friday. Uh, hmm. What did they arrest you for? Uh, uh, Martin. <laughs> Martin. This on that. Did something. you have a sign? Were you marching with uh, a sign? Yeah, I was marching with a sign. Okay. And, uh, you know, uh, by the time they took the sign from me, I had forgotten my instructions. <laughs> Somebody grabbed it. It that scared me. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, uh, well, what was it like being in jail for five days? Uh, it was awful. <laughs> I mean, it, it was, uh, uh, so it was, Scary, you know, because I part of my instructions was not to um, tell them, you know, uh, give them any information about yourself, your family, and mm-hmm. so forth. And they, you know, no comment was uh, you supposed to say no comment to your name. Your, you know, mm-hmm. give them all of this so that they can, you know, use that to intimidate you and your family. I guess. So you didn't tell them your name. <laughs> well, initially, mm-hmm. when I got in there, I did not. Uh, you know, my my uh, response was no comment. Mm-hmm. You know, because that's, you know, that's what it was supposed to be, and that's right. what I felt. You know, I was trying to do my my part. Right. Um, but uh, you know, having experienced all of these things real quickly, uh, we got up there, and um, as this um, policeman. Uh, I don't know if he was a sergeant or a uh, county sheriff, whatever. That mm-hmm. White man with a very pronounced uh, southern accent, um, which you know I wasn't really used to uh, white people <laughs> at all, and, and I was intimidated by by them mm-hmm. at that point, you know, because uh, there was no friend. I had no white friends or no. Mm-hmm. Friendly exchanges, you know, except maybe at school, but at least uh, you had uh, white people that you could deal with. Sure. But anyway, I, they asked me what my name was, and I said no comment. And he was sitting behind a desk, and uh, he got up and said in this real southern ball, "What do you mean no comment?" Which was very, you know, <laughs> so you know it was. Uh, the classic response you would have to a uh, uh, redneck, mm-hmm. um, you know, you're thinking about all of the worst things they can yeah, do to you. I wonder it. what's going to happen right. depending upon your response. Right, right, right. So he got up, came around, got in my face. What did you mean? <laughs> no comment, you know. And um, 
No comment. You know, that was my response. Because that's, you know, that's what I was supposed to do. And, you know, and it's on you now, you know. <laughs> so uh, what happened, well, you know, I was scared, already scared. But what happened is that he called for two uh, trustees, black trustees, with, you know, very you know, muscular guys, and told them to take me to the sale or take me something. I don't know what he said, but he instructed them to do something with me, and they came over and grabbed me. And I was a pretty good sized guy, but they grabbed me, and my feet did not hurt, touch the ground again until we got to that sale, mm -hmm. when they threw me in the sale. Mm -hmm. uh, so, did, were you in a sale by yourself? No, no, I was in a cell. Um, I was in a cell that was probably, in retrospect, I think it was uh, for our hardened criminals that were uh, in isolation. It was a cell for one person. Mm -hmm. But there was, it was either five or six guys already in there <laughs> when, they, when they put me in there. So these were young, young, young guys, guys too. like myself, same age or, or younger. Yeah. Um, and uh, they, you know, threw me in there and locked the door, you know. It was, did they say, did the trustees say anything to you? They didn't say anything. They just did what the white man said, <laughs> you know. So, and uh, they locked the cell. Okay, and like I said, it was, and they, may, they may have put one more guy in there after me, but it was already full. <laughs> and they closed the, um, they closed that sale from the outside. Nothing, everything closed from the outside somewhere. Right. And uh, this sale was already too small. Like I said, we couldn't, you couldn't sit down. We wound up sitting on the floor, and, but you couldn't stretch out on the floor. You couldn't <laughs> lay down on the floor. It's, it's, real cramped. Yeah, it's cramped. real cramped. Mm -hmm. No matter which way you try to do it, there's so many people in there. And there was a, uh, commode in there and it flushed from the outside. So, you know, if anybody had to use it, they could flush it when they got ready. Oh, you yeah. could not flush the commode from, from the inside. inside. They would simply it from outside. And did they flush it every time someone uh, used it? Uh, no, no. They just, you know, whenever they, I don't know, I, I don't even remember that if they did or not. Or, or if anybody, you know, urinated, but I don't think anybody did anything else while we were in there. Maybe. I don't know. I don't remember that. But I know it flushed from the outside. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was also um, the water. There was no water in the cell. And if we wanted some water, we had to drink it through the bars out of a, um, like a gallon tin can, like what, what uh, fruits, uh, Vegetables or something. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what that's what the water was in. So if you needed any water, you know, you had to drink through the bars. Through that. You have to hold it up and drink yourself. Okay. Yeah. And you know they would refill it mm -hmm. if it got empty. You know that type of thing. So it was you know that that was <laughs> you know, all of that was very unsettling. Uh, were there any activities that you guys participated in while you were there? Uh, any, did you do any singing or uh, any, any talking with anyone else? Did you have any contact with the outside? Uh, no, no. Uh, well, well, in this in this isolation type thing with the with the other the seven other guys in there, uh, we didn't. Uh, do any singing or anything. We were just uh, stunned by the by what we were. Mm -hmm. And um, at, at some point, some somebody came up with the idea of making noise because they can't treat us like this. You know, we got to uh, let them know that this is not fair and all that. So we did make noise. And uh, as a result of that. How did you make noise? Um, um, Beat on the walls, sort of thing. I, at some point, at some point, we were issued um, ten cups for for coffee or something. Mm -hmm. But I don't think we uh, see. I, it was about a day, a day and a half uh, that I was in this sale. I don't know if we had those cups there or, or 
or when we got into the larger population. Mm -hmm. um, but you did make noise. You did make noise. Mm -hmm. And uh, they came in and they, you know, did something to try to suppress the noise, mm -hmm. you know, which was to wet us up, you know, in the cell, <laughs> you know. So, uh, uh, which in the cell, yeah, be from making noise. Making noise. So, yeah. It came in and uh, threw water on us, uh, you know, and then we were sitting in this cell that was already too small with three inches of water on the floor. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and with, you know, the, you got wet while they were waiting in there. Mm -hmm. The trustees did that too, uh, you know, at their instruction, you know. And, well, did, it, did this feel like a game of sorts? Uh, and you were there, did you look at it in that manner? Uh, well, I, uh, we, at, at first, I looked at it in that manner, you know. But uh, after, after we got into it, you know, I started looking. I was being intimidated by this process, which is what they, I guess, they were wanting to do. <laughs> but it was a game at first. But uh, after you got out back out into the population, mm -hmm. then what was that experience like? Uh, that 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 experience was uh, a little bit uh, different, you know, uh, a little bit better. Uh, it was a little bit better, um, but uh, we did still didn't didn't uh, as I recall, we didn't sing any freedom songs. Uh, mm -hmm. That was. Uh, it was just kids, uh, a lot of kids who didn't really know as any, any more than I did about, you know. Uh, There's no real leadership. No, no, yeah, no, no leadership. To no one that stood up and took control of all that. Right, to, to, to tell us, like, well, maybe we should be singing some spring trim songs and uh, uh, focus on why we're really here. This is uh, <laughs> for our freedom and, you know. Uh, that probably was what helped us, but we didn't have that. Mm -hmm. um, and we just uh, spent the time, uh, uh, you know, uh, bickering sometimes. <laughs> we still made a lot of noise. Mm -hmm. And when we were in the um, general population, they would take people out. There were so many of us in there. And uh, they would take people out and put them in what they call a sweat box. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, so that they would come back and and be uh, <laughs> right. And uh, I always pretended that I was asleep because I didn't want to go to the sweat box. And I, why would they take someone and put them in the sweat box? Because the, everybody in the in the cell will, you know, what I mean, will make a noise. Mm -hmm. Okay, so they would take one as an example. Uh, no, they would take a section. <laughs> a section. You know, you know, whether you were making the noise or not, and take them to the sweat box. And then, you know, it takes people in, they come back and tell how the sweat box was. And, uh, you know, of course, we still kept up the noise, so they would come back and get some more. But uh, I was fortunate enough not to be just lucky that I didn't, they didn't put me in the sweat box because it was. Uh, I didn't know what it was like, but they thought, they said it was bad. <laughs> so I, yeah, so you, you don't know, have that experience. Oh, oh yeah, I'm, you were you were actually in jail at the same time that a young man, last name was Gaston. Yes, yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Tell me about that. Yeah, when I got back into the general, uh, you mm -hmm. know, bigger area of uh, demonstrators, uh, um, they brought this. Uh, young man in and he, his pants was split and he had a bandage on his thigh and uh, leg and you know uh, he was saying that he had been bitten by the dog you know you know uh, we were asking him what happened to him and everything and he had not gotten any real medical treatment at that point and he was saying that uh, you know he they just let the dogs, and I had heard about the dogs biting people or mm -hmm. them letting them go at people. I hadn't, hadn't seen it before. Right. And uh, he came in and, uh, you, know, you know, he was just one of, one of us, who, mm -hmm. you know, was going through the sweat box thing and everything else. Mm -hmm. um, and then at some point, they came and took him out, and I guess they gave him medical treatment 
after that, I guess. Uh, but he wasn't in there very long with me, but uh, he was there maybe a day, uh, or all day one day. And then at some point they came and took him out. And uh, I, I didn't see him again uh-huh. in jail, but I saw him after I got out. Uh, you didn't see him after you got out? Uh, I, saw him, I saw the, the uh, magazine, the pictures of him being bitten, oh. and that, that, you know, so, oh, he was in this, you know, okay. so but I never saw him again, you know. So you didn't you know, know him? I probably didn't know him personally. No. Mm-hmm. Um, what were the circumstances of your uh, uh, release from jail? Uh, they, uh, after five days, they just let us, let, uh, released us. I think uh, somebody came, uh, by, some family member came and got us, somehow, mm-hmm. uh, as I recall. I'm Remember, there was any special thing about it, uh, except oh. they were letting people. Oh, they, I guess uh, the uh, movement must have bailed us out or something. Okay. I don't know. Uh, I don't remember anymore. Yeah. But we did get out of five days. Yeah. Yeah. What was the reception at school? You returned to school because now you were out of school for a whole week. Yeah. So now you returned to school. What was the reception of the administration and of the children? Um. Well, it was uh, it was normal. Uh, there was no special uh, positive or negative reception. You know, uh, I just explained that I was gone because I was in jail uh, with the demonstrations. But um, you were not reprimanded for no, for missing no, school. No, um, I wasn't reprimanded at all. What, what were the? Uh, how did your 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 peers receive you in your jail? Uh, well, well, just normal. I mean, there was no uh, pats on the back or anything like that. It was, oh, that was, was there it. many uh, children from the Macalada? No, that, that one, no, not that many. Uh, I don't can't think of any. <laughs> that, you know, except me and my cousins right. that were, you know, there that, that went. Um, but um, you know. Now they may have, they had, may have been, right. but it was like, I but guess, it wasn't like, I guess, you yeah. went back at the same time, right. and you, right, yeah, uh, and I didn't know any of them that that went, right. you know, and, and I guess there was no ceremony or, 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 or I was associated with, it. so when yeah. they went, you know, I didn't know, and they didn't mm-hmm. probably didn't know that I went, except if you were in my class, so. Yeah. Uh, I've heard that at Ullman and at Parker there were discussions actually of uh, of movement activity uh, by some teachers, not all teachers, uh, but by some teachers. Was that ever the case at Michael that you knew? No. No. No uh, discussion at all about uh, civil rights. Uh, or, you know, there was, you, they just left it outside. Hmm. Uh, I, you know, that we didn't, uh, didn't, I don't know why, you know, uh, they didn't deal with it, but they didn't, at, not at school. Were there any of your teachers that were involved uh, at, at all that you, that you remember? No. So really, the, your school really didn't have a presence in the movement from your perspective, anyway, you know, from where you know this thing. Not at all. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, the, the priest at the at our later family at the time did go to some uh, movement meetings. You know, I mean, mass meetings. Mass meetings. Okay. Uh, you know, occasionally they, they went to the meetings. Mm-hmm. But in terms of coming to the classroom, or uh, anybody talking to the students about it, or talking from the uh, the uh, sermon about it on Sunday. I didn't see that. I didn't didn't see that. What what were your activities after that? Were you involved with movement after you had been arrested and returned to school? Were there other activities that you were involved with? Well, I I continued to support, you know, not not from school, but from from home, whatever. activities that we could, whatever I could do, whatever. And then there were some um, organizations formed that where they were trying to get uh, black and white kids together 
um, the uh, organization of Christians and Jews or something like that. Right? I used to go to those. Uh, yeah. Yeah, the Council, Council of Christians and Jews. Yeah. yeah. I went to that and uh, participated in that until I went away to college. Um, um, uh, but nothing, nothing formally yeah. after that. After you finished high school, you went over to Xavier, you finished Xavier. Did you come back to Birmingham again? Yeah. Um, no, no. I, I, I came back, I tried to uh, find employment uh, as a pharmacist here and I uh, was unable to. And I got a job, uh, they called me from Chicago well, <laughs> to say that if I came to Chicago, I, I had a job. So I went to Chicago. Who called you from Chicago? Uh, Walgreens. Walgreens you, had, you had made an application? I had an interview with them at school. Oh. And, um, and uh, you know, I didn't uh, expect, well, I guess they uh, had all of the uh, interviewees, uh, whatever. And then when I finished, they uh, sent me a letter saying that uh, if I wanted to come to Chicago, I had a job. And I had, and I really didn't want to go because I always wanted to stay in the South. I wanted to, uh, you know, make whatever contribution I could make here because, so, you know, this was, this was where I was from. Right. How was that transition from Birmingham to Chicago? Uh, it was, uh, it was doing rather smoothly um, because, uh, you know, I was uh, employed. <laughs> so that helps, you know, you, you have more, um, Options when you when you know you have uh, employment, you can you know sort of do things you want to do, and um, the uh, we were making some progress uh, in terms of the civil rights, and uh, I, um, I accept it for the fact that you you worked in a segregated in Chicago segregated too, so I was still you know working. Primarily with black people mm -hmm. in a black community, so that was not a whole lot of interaction with uh, mm -hmm. white people. There was no integration to speak of. Right. But um, um, I don't know how to express that really. But um, you know, I was still uh, trying to make my contribution to my people. Mm -hmm. Right. Even after you left here, yeah. right, which kind of was basically the same kind of setup because mm -hmm. you're basically black folk, right. Well, yeah. Um, 25 years after, how do you, if you were buried on that? Um, well, we, uh, it seems to, uh, I'm uh, positively impressed by some of the changes that have made. You know, um, the same uh, drugstores that I went to trying to get employment have black pharmacists now, or uh, black employees, which was not the case when I left. <laughs> so that that's positive. I see. Uh, uh, people moving ahead uh, economically here, uh, black people, that um, and politically, uh, I see more of that happening than I saw when I, before I left. So it, it's sort of a positive thing. I'm just uh, I'm sort of disappointed that I, I'm not here to uh, you know participate in it, uh, but uh, I'm glad to see it. Right. So maybe you get the chance to return at some point. Uh, is there anything else that you'd like to share? We've covered a lot of bases. Uh, well, uh, this is one thing. I don't know. Um, uh, one thing that I find that you know, uh, nationally, that uh, that that's been disappointing to me is that uh, when I was here growing up uh, and involved in the civil rights movement. We were all united. I, I felt that the community was united, going toward that goal of, of freedom. And, um, and most of us, whatever contribution we could make, we were going to make it, you know, whether big or small. And um, I find that uh, now people are not that committed to that. They don't seem to recognize that uh, we are all. You know, it, we, it, we got to do it for ourselves, in other words. You know, uh, I, I, I'm very disappointed by that. You know, whether you do anything or not, you, you have to recognize 
that it's up to you, it's up to us. And I, if I undermine you, then I'm undermining myself. You know, Do so. you see that happening all over the country? Or are there mm-hmm. any, any uh, positives that are taking place to, to reverse that trend that you know? Uh, well, uh, individually, uh, you can see people, uh, you know, getting beyond that. But uh, as a as a group, I don't recognize it. You know, we you know we're not we don't seem to pull together the way we should. You know, you have to draw I mean motion pictures for people to see it. And and uh, before, you know, at least my experience as a child here is that, you know, we are going as a people in this direction. And, you know, once uh, the leaders stepped off in that direction, then we all fell in line behind it. And we were going to do whatever we could. And, um, you know, we, we don't do that now. <laughs> I don't, yeah, I don't see that, uh, that type of book. And we can, you know, uh, looking back at it, I think, uh, might help mm-hmm. if we can see where we came from. Right. Um, Studying that history. Yeah. yeah. Mr. Lee, I want to thank you for taking time out of your schedule. Uh, coming, uh, you visiting here from Chicago. Uh, I want to have you come back anytime and spend some more time with us. Okay. I've enjoyed it.